Hey, it's now been two weeks that we have been protesting in the U.S. against police brutality. And I think it's very clear to everybody that the American dream is dead, if it was ever even alive at all. And that's what I want to talk to you today, how the American dream for my generation is not only dead, but it is time for us to build a new society and how we can possibly start to work our way towards that. Like many immigrants, I grew up dreaming of living in the United States. I didn't know as a kid exactly what that meant. I just knew that when I looked at every single one of my toys, they said made in the USA, and every single music video pretty much that I listened to was in English and made in the US. And most of the culture that we consumed growing up in Costa Rica and even Nicaragua was made in the United States. But of course, to adults, for at least the last 50 years or more, the United States has symbolized economic prosperity and stability, as well as that promise that you can move forward, you can move up in society if you just work hard enough. And not only will you have the opportunity to try here, but it's also a safe haven from violence and civil war that often plagues developing countries all around the world, not just in Latin America. As we move through the Trump presidency, but especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, which has not ended, no matter what stupid ass, greedy ass businessmen want us to believe, more and more of us are starting to actually come to the conclusion that there is no American dream left for us. And maybe there wasn't even one if you were not white and rich. And in the past, well, at least in my own lifetime, I can tell you that the failures we've been through looked like contained failures. For example, we went through 9-11 and it seemed like it was an outside act, somebody committed an act of terrorism, or in the 2008 recession where you could rationalize that, well, people shouldn't have taken out mortgages that they couldn't afford, and of course, that banks shouldn't be giving mortgages to people that couldn't afford them. But of course, as we keep growing up, every single crisis, recession, disaster just seems to reveal that the US government does not care about poor or non-white people whatsoever. The government took so long to give medical care to the 9-11 victims and many of them died from cancer before ever getting kind of relief from the government. Flint, Michigan still has no clean water since 2015. Let me just run through a quick list of other things that the United States does not care to correct. Gun violence, concentration camps at the border, massive student loan debt, continual bailing of US banks, thousands if not millions of people crippled by medical debt, wage stagnation which includes the shameful refusal to up the minimum wage to $15 despite the actual amount of money if you take inflation into consideration the minimum wage should be $25 so they can even up it to $15 greedy mother refusal to support the population despite automation continually displacing workers and we're not even at the peak of automation yet and of course the refusal to regulate fossil fuel and other industries which contribute to the damaging of our, of our environment and will displace many many more people as we move forward the refusal to stop rent prices from rising even within a pandemic in which we send people home to stop working very few mental health institutions and absolutely zero interest in creating new ones the lack of rehabilitation programs for homeless people of course who could forget mass incarceration of the black and brown populations especially through the war on drugs and i could keep going on for hours honestly but really the biggest sign that the united states government does not give a f about anybody except their donors and themselves is for a second time in a row the suppression of bernie sanders and his movement which aims to uplift the working class of the united states which is 99 percent of us by providing such luxuries as health care or just other social safety nets which created the atmosphere in which one person could move upwardly in that um, social ladder you know like social security and you know other communist ideals
And of course, I've been thinking about this because of all the protests going on and all the injustices that just all, all of us as a society are suffering if you're living in the United States, especially under Trump. But I think they very much existed before he ever came into office. And as many of you that are home right now, I have been rewatching watching some of my favorite series. So this past week, I started rewatching Narcos and I really couldn't help but stop thinking about how we are finally the other side of that coin and of course we know that narcos is based on a real life story but it almost feels like we have never seen the other side of it which is the u.s side and i feel like we are now seeing the manifestation of all those politicians who are so greedy and selling our country selling every inch of our resources our cities our people what that what that looks like for us on the other side we are in a worldwide pandemic and we're the laughing stock of the world the biggest superpower can't even provide medical care to their population throughout this entire primary we have been robbed of our ability to vote properly people have been forced to risk their life and go out and vote while there's a virus that's rampaging our society um just today there were very long lines in atlanta where people can't vote because they've closed down many offices and many and many of the mailing votes that were requested never arrived and it's not just a republican problem either like the media likes to paint it because like i mentioned twice the democratic leadership has suppressed bernie sanders because he wants to help the lower classes instead of the rich asshole psychopaths that control the world and that's actually a good segue that's exactly where i want to move to next how can we rebuild a new society and first of all i want to thank everybody that's been out there risking their life voting and protesting peacefully so that we can all live in justice especially the black community which suffers the most to this day no matter what anybody says, I don't give a f what you tell me in the comments. I like that Obama said that yes, please do both vote and protest for change to happen in society. And I want to talk to you about something else that you can do. Because if you're anything like me, you're probably feeling very guilty that you yourself are not out there protesting. I personally don't feel like it's safe with a world virus going on. And, but of course that is the privilege that I have that I feel like my life is not at risk in the hands of police brutality so I am acknowledging my privilege and instead I want to offer you something else that you can begin to do to also protest the status quo and hopefully create a new society another thing that has become glaringly apparent like I mentioned is all of the psychopaths that are in charge of businesses that basically have enough money wealth authority to rule the world like jeff bezos psychotic elon musk who goes on joe rogan and downplays the risk of coronavirus despite a hundred thousand people minimum having already died in the united states in two months or so but to me the other piece of this puzzle is making sure that all your money actually goes towards people that are neutral to good and like so many people like to say what you do has no impact in the world but of course that's wrong because the companies don't care what they do they only care about making money by definition you as the consumer dictate the business's moves so i want to encourage you with this video to really start to really think about who you give your money to moving forward and who you give your attention to of course we have seen so many useless stupid celebrities and influencers we have seen them revealed for who they are in the past two weeks some of them are very racist close-minded don't want to change they don't deserve your money they don't deserve to have that power that authority the, that platform protest if you feel like that's something you want to do definitely go out there and vote become involved with your community run for office if that's something you like to do more than anything i like to inspire you with this video to begin to challenge yourself to really 
decide where your money goes and of course it's gonna be based on what you care about do you care about the environment more do you care more about shopping and do you care more about not creating waste do you care more about the food that you eat i want to challenge you to start to make little changes in your life so that your money is going to better people for example my challenge for this year is to figure out how to stop supporting amazon and that's actually going to be my next video and we already know the answer to that question you stop shopping at amazon i feel like we have been indoctrinating into just wanting to be comfortable and wanting things to be easy and just being like satisfied with having stuff and what does it matter if you have all this stuff if you don't even have health insurance or ability to get medical care in a worldwide pandemic there are many ways in which you can start to challenge yourself little by little for example i started little by little i still don't feel like oh i'm living like a 100 sustainable life or like conscious consumerist type life but i've made a couple of things that make me feel really good and that make me want to move forward my first step was getting an electric car in 2017 when it was time to get a new car and of course that might not be like the most logical thing for you right now we're not going to work a lot of you don't have work so of course start with something that makes sense to you and your life i had said at the beginning of the year is i want to mostly shop at thrift stores but i want to add to that and um i want my challenge for this year to be to stop shopping at amazon and like i said it's just a matter of learning to be uncomfortable and creating new habits i spent like many hours last weekend trying to order a new comforter because like i told you guys my cat like scratched her eye a while back and i had to take it to the hospital it was a big mess and long story short she peed on my bed at night when she had the cone on her head you know the, the cone machine and i finally got around to buying it and of course i didn't want to buy from amazon it really comes down to you just have to be uncomfortable and do the research and unfortunately i still ended up buying something from amazon because it is a fucking monopoly and uh, for the price that i want to shop at for some reason i couldn't find anywhere else that would fit like I could get a duvet and I could get a duvet cover of the same size, whatever. What I, I guess what I'm trying to say is give yourself a long time to achieve the goal. Don't put yourself down because your first try, you didn't achieve it. At your first try, you're not going to achieve changing this society because they have built, they have, the establishment has done everything absolutely that they can so that you cannot change this society so that you have to shop at amazon so that if you live in a rural community you have to support walmart so don't put yourself down if it takes you a long time to get there I stopped eating at mcdonald's because they don't really support the fight for a 15 dollars minimum wage and i think that's bullshit and if any corporation in the world can afford that 15 dollars uh, an hour is mcdonald's so bitches i have not eaten mcdonald's since 2016 and i feel amazing and of course that wasn't easy at first either i had to go out of my way pay more for burgers from like local little burger places but whatever eventually it became a habit eventually it became something i didn't have to think about and that's what i want you to focus on i want you to focus on building habits building habits to look for other vendors instead of just going directly to amazon for everything just go one step at a time and then challenge yourself to more challenge yourself to more when i stopped eating mcdonald's it was actually for some reason very easy now not to go to many other fast food foods just building the new habits created that new habit in my mind of like hold on what other restaurants are around me that i can try or can i even cook for myself at home which is obviously obviously cheaper but you know what i mean what's hard is not the behavior it's what's hard is changing the habits that you have been built that you have created throughout your life that are really not serving you or the world and like i said there are many ways in which you can slowly start to train yourself because that's really what it is to live a more sustainable more conscious consumerist lifestyle for example i was really into like wanting for my next goal to be going towards zero waste of course i said in one of my last videos with the whole covid 19 
I feel like we're I'm creating more waste trying to live, you know, trying to clean everything when I get home and everything. So, of course, that went out the window. But instead, what can I do? I can, for example, and it's gonna sound really stupid. What I have tried to focus on is buying less, especially less beauty products. I know so many times I just want a new perfume or like new makeup. And I haven't even finished my old one. So if you're somebody that wants to challenge yourself to create less waste, maybe you can challenge yourself this year to buy less until you finish the items that you have at home. So you can find ways to work around all the impediments that you that we're finding because of COVID-19. And yeah, that's really all I wanted to talk to you today. I think to me it's become very apparent that we can't have psychopaths not just running the world like in Congress. But we can't have them as business men and women if their businesses are going to become huge and therefore are going to, from a third party position, going to control our society. I know it's really hard right now because more and more businesses are falling. But because of that, it is even more important that we give our dollars to people that have local businesses or just sustainable, conscious, ethical businesses. That person may not just run that business. One day that business may become big enough to actually have influence over our society. And so I really want to leave you thinking about that. Let me know in the comments of this video if you have been thinking about similar things and what are your goals for the next year? What are you challenging yourself? Like I said, I'm challenging myself to shop less from Amazon until that number is down to zero. So as always, I hope you guys are doing okay. Let me know what you've been thinking throughout this protest that have been going on in our country. I didn't make a video last week because I went two weeks in which I made four videos and that was very tiring. So I just took the week off and yeah, with all the protests that were going on, it also felt like insensitive to me making videos um, because they're essentially like, look at me, 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 or <laughs> that's what it feels like to me. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you still are, subscribe if you like to continue talking about world domination and leave me your thoughts in the comments of this video. Like I said, my next video is most likely going to be about how to stop shopping on Amazon. So if that's something that you want to talk about, subscribe so when the next video comes out, you are ready to watch it. And remember that I now am publishing every Thursday morning instead of Wednesdays because not only did I see in my analytics, a lot of you guys are actually more active on Thursday mornings, but I was actually constantly uploading videos late, very late Wednesday night or very early Thursday morning. So I might as well just change my own schedule <laughs> to something that fits me and that fits you. So, so anyway, thank you for watching. See you in the next time.